Tonight's forecast is sponsored by Ashbrook Audiology, where relationships matter. Happy Thursday to you, everybody. We hope you're doing well wherever you may find yourself on the start of the weekend. I'm Weatherman Dustin Staples. Appreciate your company. As always, it's an exciting weekend. It's football, and we are proud to bring that back here with you again for another year in a row. We're going to head over to the Bengals' house. That is Bassett. A big shout-out to Chad's hometown. He is born and raised there and proud to be a Bassett, a Bassettinian, Bassett resident. Let's put it that way. I don't want to get myself in trouble. But anyway, I uh, hope you'll be coming out tomorrow night at 7 p.m. as the Bengals are taking on the Franklin County Eagles. And so all of our high school football Martinsville, Magna Vista, Patrick County are also taking on other teams as well. So support local high school football while you're at it. So for the rest of today, if you're doing anything out and about, our temperatures are going to go from the 70s for the later on this evening hour. Mix of fair weather. Clouds will see in partly to mostly cloudy sky coming in right there at 69 degrees with your temperature staying very cool and mild overnight. Some other area night temperatures for most of us. We are going to begin to see our temperatures staying in the 60s out there with part to mostly cloudy skies in effect with that. Uh, calm wind is expected with uh, just a partly to mostly clear overnight uh, developing temperature staying in the 50s to low to mid 60s. So not a bad night to take advantage of. For our area wide, Syrity of Martinsville, we're here at the BTW 21 TV studio, we can expect our surrounding communities in Franklin, or excuse me, in uh, Axton, Ridgeway, uh, Bassett, Stanley Town, Phildale, uh, those districts as well. No, no complaints with that. Maybe an isolated shower possible late in the day. Uh, temperatures in the upper 80s, so a pretty warm afternoon is in the making for us as well. So as you do things, if you're doing anything out and about tomorrow, maybe, of course, this is now the second full week for all of our area high, uh, high school and football underway. Well, the first full uh, week of Friday night football because uh, the last couple of weeks have been more scrimmage matches and benefit games things of that nature. So as you see here, if you're heading out to wherever the, your team's going to be playing, do check the high school uh, upstate website. Make sure that their school is traveling because I can be honest with you, I don't know who's playing who except for Bassett and Franklin County. So as the Eagles are traveling down 220 tomorrow, just outside of uh, uh, Henry County here, you should be expecting some much calm conditions. Again, an isolated shower is possible for a lot of our um, Region. So if you're doing anything later tomorrow afternoon, just do know that there may be a pop-up shower, but it'll be short-lived to say the least. That's why we're getting it kind of generally to mostly to partly cloudy skies later throughout the day. So if you're doing anything across the weekend, just keep that in mind. Something else I want to quickly remind you of, pollen levels are on the rise again. We have our ragweed, um, chicken, chinapede, chinapod, excuse me, and grasses. So a lot of the hays just recently wrapped up their bailing. So maybe if you suffer from hay fever or other additional allergies, because all that pollen and that grass have just been sitting there over the last uh, couple of months thanks to everything blooming and now everything is slowly dying off now as uh, we're ending the summer season. Kind of hard to believe on that note too. And all important here is your Friday night football forecast. We'll break it down for you real quickly here. Again, 7 p.m. kickoff time right there at the first quarter. Uh, it's coming in at 80 degrees, so you shouldn't have a bad night expected. Maybe a stray shower or two, but other than that thing should be pretty uh, kind of calm and quiet. That should not be saying 7 p.m. Again, my computer here had a mind of its own and wanted to do its thing, so I tried fixing it. I love technology so very much. So this should be 8 p.m. and then 9 o'clock there. So right now, halftime, not looking too bad. Uh, Mid-70s, and again, we'll end the game right around 8.30, 9 o'clock or so. So again, 8 p.m., 9 o'clock, my computer wanted to freeze up on me again. So uh, I love when the technology doesn't want to work at the finest way it does. So ignore that. So again, first half of the game looking pretty good. Nothing to be weather worried about as you make your way later through the game hours too. Here is the rest of your weekend forecast. As you do see here, an isolated chance of a shower and storm on Saturday. Temperature is pretty warm, so near flirting near 90. So as I said, we were not done with the 90s, but we're right close to it though. Humidity levels will also be back up again, so a pop and go shower is possible. Highs on Sunday coming in at 84 with an isolated chance and or shower or storm is possible. So other than that, uh, just keep the umbrella with you. Our overnight our temperatures at night 
kind of been near normal where they've been for the last couple of months. So uh, nothing to be, or the last couple of weeks rather, I shall say, with that and uh, clear to partly cloudy skies each and every weeknight. Monday will bring back a possible pop and go shower and storm in the forecast. Your high coming in at 87, but again, just an isolated shower or storm chance is in the making as you do things. Uh, going into in the final days of August right now, it does appear that we may begin to kind of say pretty um, warm and maybe cooling down for the Labor Day weekend. So. That'll be a benefit uh, for us because we really need to uh, kind of cool down. Uh, I personally think we have just been so warm over the last uh, couple of uh, months, thanks to it being summer, you know. So summertime, that's what you get. You get those high 80s and 90s and something else that we've been telling you a lot about is the drought. This is pretty impressive. I normally don't show this. I just thought I had to show this because Look how much color is on this map. That's a good thing. You want less color on the drought monitor. Our friends outside of South Hill and Emporia, uh, going outside of uh, Charlotte Courthouse and Pennsylvania counties, there are a little bit of a moderate drought, but you kind of see here, and then of course our friends just outside the Chesapeake Bay, Virginia Beach region, and a little tinted yellow there. But other than that, our temper or the drought monitor uh, has been uh, pretty good to say the least. Thanks to all of our daily chances of rain and showers and storms that we've been seeing, for the last several weeks, this is pretty good. So other than that, neither this little smidge of yellow here and a little bit out there towards the Chesapeake and Virginia Beach area, nothing to be complaining about as you make your way towards the upcoming uh, week ahead. So good job to all of our, our rain because that helped us out pretty uh, much to help us not be in a sufficient drought. I do want to quickly wrap things up here. Um, as most of you know, we have, uh, you've probably been observing, if you've watched me with my wardrobe here, I have a little pin on, the, on my uh, cloak, on my coat here, excuse me. Uh, as you know, this Friday, the 26th of August, uh, as we lost a journalist and a dear friend of ours, that was Allison Parker and photojournalist Adam Ward. Luis and I, this is way, way, way before we got into TV here. Here I am, there's Luis. You know, Allison Parker, the belated, late, the late Allison Parker, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, uh, the incident ended a little too extreme uh, on that, uh, that shooting that occurred on August 26th at 645 on Smith Mount Lake Plaza, you know, showcasing a story, beautiful part of our region. So take some time this weekend to memorize uh, one fellow Martinsville High School. She was also a Martinsville Hall alumni and JMU graduate and of course pursuing her dream career and look at here I'm gonna step out of the shot she is doing what she loved doing when she was doing it so we're gonna say farewell for now and we will talk again next week